Hello everyone. Hi, welcome and thank you so much for being here. We're going to do a collective and timeless reading. So whenever this reading finds its way to you is the right time, but keep in mind, it's still a general reading. So see which signs, symbols, messages resonate for you and hopefully help to bring you a little clarity on whatever you're wondering, concerned, confused about. It could broaden your perspective and show you something with fresh eyes. It could also narrow your focus and show you something you could be missing. But in the end, always trust yourself. That divine inner guidance is inside of you and try to make balanced decisions between logic and intuition so that your decisions are sound and based in love and for the highest and greatest good of everyone. So we're all uplifted in love. We're gonna start with a little creativity. This is the Creativity Oracle. Let's get some clarity for you guys. Let's see what God, Source, Holy Spirit, Christ Consciousness, higher selves, angels, and energies of love have for the highest and the greatest good of all. A little clarity for the collective, please. Thank you. Oh, I like this. Oh my God, it's a cheetah with a ruffles on. <laughs> be original, be different, be unique, be you. There's nobody else that's ever existed that is you. How special is that? So maybe it's your unique flair, your unique way that you dress. Put on your ruffles and do the cha-cha. Oh my gosh. I have to show you guys something. Look at this. Are you, wow. What does this say? Wait. Oh, okay. Originality. Feel lighthearted and free while trusting that your unique way of doing things is the right way. So it's just trusting that you can do something your way, that you are special <laughs> and that you can express yourself however, you know, feels like you. I mean, this... This cheetah looks like the mask, you know, in the mask when he's, he has the big ruffles on and he's like doing that dance, but it looks like this amazeballs cheetah actually has maracas. I have to show you guys something. I was, I was hoping to practice my maracas <laughs> so I could possibly put that in, in my music when I sing and I have them. They're here. Look at this. I have to get better at the rhythm thing and to sing and to move and do it all at once. <laughs> I, I literally have my maracas here. So, hey, we're starting with some awesome synchronicity on this reading. So maybe it's something cool like that. You were just thinking about something or you had something there and something like that pops up right in your world. That's just special. It's just cool. Like, hey... <laughs> so let's continue. Um, let's get, now I want to get another card from here. Let's get another one. Una mas. Clarity on originality. Being original. Being different. I actually hear gift. Maybe your special way of doing something is a gift or there's a gift coming in or you're thinking of getting somebody like a really original gift, which is probably something that's um, more meaningful. You know, if you're getting, getting a gift for someone, maybe you're even making something. Yeah. One more card from this deck. I kind of feel like it wants to be that one. Let's get that one. Muse. Oh, wow. I love this. Seek out or act as a positive, inspiring, and helpful muse to others' creativity. I mean, people can see somebody and want to mimic how they look or mimic a style or, you know, try to do something a little bit like someone else that they admire, but it's never going to be exactly the same. So you are actually inspiring others by being you. People are looking at you and they're just kind of in awe. 
So maybe you're a trendsetter. Hey, maybe, you know, there's something you do and you find that there's other people that kind of maybe copy you a little bit, but they're never going to be you. And that's actually like, it's, actually, it's very flattering, you know? And then maybe if, you know, that doesn't feel like your style anymore because you set that trend and it went out there, you're going to probably set a new trend. So be that muse, be that inspiration, live your truth. There could also be somebody else that is kind of like your muse, somebody that you admire, that inspires you, that kind of gets your own creative flow and juices a moving. So it doesn't have to be doing the exact same thing as someone else. It's sometimes just seeing somebody else in their creative flow with that beautiful, vibrant energy that just inspires you to tap into your own vibrancy, your own energy, your own little creative something that you do. So this is really nice. I looked at this, so let's take it and then let's put this deck away. And this says, capable. This horse up here. It says, you can deal successfully with whatever challenges and circumstances arise. So you're going to have a successful outcome. You're going to figure something out. If something wasn't a success, you now know to go in a different direction, to do something a different way, make another attempt or not. What challenges? I mean, that just makes me think of like, I don't know, I, I see like a race, I see hurdles. So, you know, if something was, you know, you're trying to jump over these hurdles and they're not the right height, you adjust or you practice so that the next time you try that thing, you have a little more strength. Um, I'm getting like practice. You are perfectly capable of doing exactly what you dream. Just sometimes in the beginning, there's some learning curves that happen. That's, that's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we adjust. That's how we redirect. So successful challenges. Sometimes challenges actually come in our lives, whether that's a hurdle or a roadblock, a redirect, something like that, because it's actually a bigger lesson coming in because we are supposed to be redirecting our attention or our movement somewhere else. And sometimes without a little friction, you know, a little bit of friction in an area, if there's too much comfortability, then it's kind of like, like I see hurdles. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm seeing like exercise visions right now, but it's kind of like, you know, when you're on the treadmill, if you're doing the exact same thing every single day and you're running that 20 minutes, even though that is good, it is good and it is healthy. But if you want to have better results, you have to switch it up. You have to switch up the incline. You have to, you know, do something a little bit different. Um, Although consistency is good, let's get some clarity. Um, but with what? Let's go to this one. This is the, what is it called? It has like a lot of S's. The angels and gemstone guardians cards. This one. Let's get a little clarity. I'm going to these up. I can't believe this cheetah. <laughs> that just made my day. That made my day. So cool. Let's get a message. This is like an angel message and bonus, a stone. Clarity on Muse, originality, and capable. What is that? Oh, how light. How light is really, really nice. I like how light. It looks a little bit like marble. This is the angel of purification. Blessings throw, uh, flow through me like a healing river. I am fluid. I am pure and clear. I take the time. I need to relax. Ooh, yeah. In a pool or bath, I drink the right amount of water to maintain 
a healthy body, it is really important to make sure you drink enough water. It's not over drinking. You can drink too much, but sometimes when you're like, you get that little bit of dehydration thing going on, your brain gets foggy. <laughs> you know, the, the things don't move right in your body. So maybe it's carrying a little bottle of water with you. Um, are you drinking enough water? Do you take time to take a bath? Hey, or go for a swim. Water purifies your body and your mind. Hydrate yourself inside and out to maintain fluidity in all levels of consciousness. Detoxify your mind, body, and emotions. So that's really nice. That's like getting rid of some toxins, whether that's just an energy thing or actually in your body, having a cleanse. Um, I mean, it's saying take a bath, take a beautiful shower. If you have a pool, swim in the pool. If you are by the ocean and it's not freeze balls right now, <laughs> then maybe just, or, or there, hey, that's a thing too. What do they call that? What's it like the, I mean, that's a little Wim Hof, which is really a cool book if you ever want to read any of his stuff. But um, I think they call it like the polar bear swimmers. Um, I know that. I think off of Coney Island in New York, there was like a team. <laughs> My friend actually used to do it and they'd go out in the middle of the winter and go on out in that water. So, hey, maybe that's something some of you do. But if cold water is not for you, um, maybe it's just a beautiful bubble bath. Light some candles, listen to some good music. It's gonna be cleansing and healing and it does give you a little space. So even if it's not actual toxins that are going away, it's meditation, it's self-care, allowing yourself that little moment. <laughs> you know, if you just have to say, I'm in the bath, <laughs> I, I need a half an hour, 20 minutes and I will be out. You know, shut your phone off or put some music on. Do something really special for you. All right, let's switch up. But with what? Let's go to an animal card. We have creativity, we have some stones, an angel message. Let's get an animal message. This is uh, messages from your animal spirit guides. Clarity for collective. I keep hearing lemon, but it's making me think of like lemon water, but that also makes me think of like, um, like when you get something and it's, it's like a little bit sour. So maybe there's like a sour energy. There's a way to make something sweeter. I'm not sure exactly what that message is. Let's get one message from the animals. Oh, we have a mountain goat. That's so cool. I'm going to find a picture of like the goats that sit on the little ledges. <laughs> and they're like up there with their little hooves. Like how do they get up there? What are they doing up there on that cliff? It's so amazing. But the message on this particular card with this deck is that there is something that's out of balance. Um, maybe you put something on the shelf or this is something out of balance in your energy, in your schedule. It's something where you feel like, like I'm getting even that you're stuck. I kind of see that mountain goat up there, like on that ledge, a little bit stuck on something. So it's not staying up there on that ledge forever. You, act, you eventually have to come down. You can reclimb something another time, but it says there's something out of balance in your life. So do whatever you need to do to correct it. So this involves you actually redirecting your attention. Is there a place where you're being drained? Is there a person or partnership or situation or environment where you're always <clears throat> drained or where there's lack of communication since I felt like I just had to clear my throat? And then it's 
either speaking clearly, you know, that maybe you need a little more space or something needs to change, um, be addressed, or it's actually just taking yourself out of that environment, maybe, maybe all together, or maybe just a little bit, a little bit of a tweak in your schedule or something. So you can put yourself into places where you feel uplifted, where you feel elevated, where you feel good. You feel like your battery is plugged back in. And sometimes it's something small too with this, you know, cause we can get drained from our everyday, you know, things that we have to do, our responsibilities, but even though it's good to put time and attention and responsibility into the things that you have to do, sometimes just taking that little moment in the bath or that little bit of time to play or get into something that's creative or listen to an amazing song, that actually can totally redirect your energy and, and how you feel. So when you have to go back to that thing, you actually feel different. So... Let's get one more card. One more card from this de deck, please. Let me go. Something out of balance. Cheetah! Wow! Look at this, guys. Where is it? Where is it? Apparently, some of you have the cheetah <laughs> as, your, as your spirit animal. And some of you have this awesome cheetah that wears the, the, ruffly, the ruffly shirt thing. So what's, what does this say? Cheetah. I mean, just think of how fast they are. They're so fast. So maybe something is moving too fast or you are moving too fast or you want something to move faster. Maybe the cheetah needs a bath. Get clear on your intention. Stay focused and then move quickly to achieve your goal. So maybe you just need, needed or you needed a little pause, a time to reflect to really ask yourself some questions why you want to do something, why you want to pursue something, why you want to leave something else. Um, if your heart is in it, if your heart is not. And then once you find this inner focus, this inner standing here, then you're going to be ready to move. I feel like once you start, you find your footing, <laughs> um, things are going to move really smooth, like effort, like the think of how fast the cheetah is. It's like a natural thing. Now I'm going back to like the hurdles and stuff like that. I feel like the cheetah and the mountain coat can just jump over those hurdles. It's like there was a training there maybe, but I feel like it's an actual like natural skill that you have. That's going to help you move. Feel lighthearted and free. I just love this cheetah. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Let's go to the tarot. Um, which tarot should we use? Let's do this. I actually have two of these. I have the Hanson Roberts tarot. It's very colorful. I really like it. But this one is so old. It was one of my first tarot decks. It might even be too old to use. Is it all sticky? Oh, it is. It's too sticky. Luckily enough, sometimes if I really like a deck, I buy it again. So let's go to the new version. I mean, sometimes even when stuff like that happens, I feel like it's sometimes important. I haven't brought this out in so long. So maybe there was something that was felt sticky, stuck. Maybe you have to, you know, do something the same but different way. Retry something. I'm trying to get it, like, you know, if you want to retry something, it's something that you really love. Try it again. Revamp it. Allow for something new to come in. messages for the collective please and thank you 
Let's get a picture of the energy going on. What is the collective? Let's see. What do we have here? Let's get clarity on the thing out of balance. What is out of balance right now? That one. That's that's beautiful. That's a star. So losing hope. You know, if that's what was out of balance, that's the star, not really under, I mean, sometimes I see the star as the star, like, let's just say like, you know, in a movie, a movie star or something like that, but it's, it is a muse. It's a guide. It's someone who inspires. Um, so maybe you lost your inspiration or... You had too many expectations even because I feel like the star, look at, she just has this water flowing. I feel like there has to be an energy flow with the star because it's healing. It's hope. It's faith. It's having that lighthouse in the sky that just guides you. But I would say upside down, the star is still kind of beautiful. But it's almost like I just kind of see like, let's just say like, what do, what do they call that when someone's a, a diva or something like that? When they're up there on the stage and not acknowledging how beautiful all the other stars are. Like, just to kind of be up there in the sky, kind of see like a high horse by yourself, then it's kind of lonely. So maybe somebody kind of felt lonely, misunderstood. I feel like this is what's coming back into balance. You're regaining hope. You're seeing something clearly. You're following this star of healing and truth and integrity and faith and guidance. That's what the star is. It's number 17. And this comes after the tower the star comes after something actually like fell over went away there was a big change it's usually something pretty big and abrupt it feels a little uncomfortable because it takes away something that wasn't working it takes away that sandy foundation it takes away that thing that was going to fall down anyway. So sometimes that's an actual thing. It could be a partnership, a relationship, a job, something that you got used to, but you kind of had that thing here going on where you felt like, you know, something needed to be changed in the purification, in the energy, that there was something there, that tower was kind of out of balance already. So sometimes it does take a actual push on you or someone else's part so that it can all just crumble and either rebuild somewhere else or rebuild better and on a different foundation the right way this is rebuilding your hope rebuilding the desire to reach that beautiful goal that you have there's something that's really beautiful it like brings that twinkle in your eye maybe that twinkle in your eye is coming back Sometimes the tower is like seeing a person or maybe a situation in a totally different light. You know, I, I kind of see the tower sometimes in a very simplistic form is if you always had a, um, a preconceived notion on whom somebody was. And then let's just say you hang out one day or you go out to coffee or something and you actually see what's behind the surface, not just the cover of the book, but a little bit deeper. And you're like, oh my gosh, I thought that person was just really quiet and didn't, you know, didn't speak up or didn't have any personality. And then you get to know someone, you're like, oh my God, they're amazing. It's like my new bestie, <laughs> who knew? So sometimes it's just a change in perception, but that could go the other way. If that's like a, you know, 
I'm getting like a preconceived notion of whom someone is. Even though that's not the always typical message with the tower. It's kind of what I see, but that could go the other way. Let's just say this star, this muse, this superstar. Let's just say it's a celebrity that you know or that you like. They're amazing in the movies. but And, you know, you have them up there on the platform and they look like the cat's meow. <laughs> or like, you know, the cheetah and the ruffles to you. And let's just say randomly you actually got to meet them like that's your favorite person and then what if you got to meet them and they're really full of themselves and maybe not really nice or just rude your perception upon seeing them even in all those movies that you you know saw could change so that's just a parable that's just an example but it's sometimes you know that notion that you had it's like what it's just not that at all so whatever is happening or revelation that has happened, I feel like that already happened because you're already at the star. The healing is already coming through. You're getting the chance to put something back into balance. You're getting the chance to move forward with something that is a huge dream of you, but it looks like it just has to start with you believing in yourself that you are capable. Clarity on the star, please, and thank you. Oh, yeah, you're confident, too. <laughs> this is definitely like a cheetah energy. This is the Knight of Rods. So this is getting your confidence back. This is usually a very sexy knight. It doesn't have to be a male or a female. He or she is really confident. Um usually creative because fiery energy is a creativity passionate they get excited they want to dive into an experience they want to go on an adventure they want to be expansive and know what they don't know and try something they never tried upside down it's getting that creative energy or that idea and passion to pursue something and staying in the bath a little too long you know, to let that fire fizzle out. It's like, you know, and not continuing with something. So, you know, sometimes this is also too much energy in too many different areas. So it can't be maintained properly. Um, this can be the night that starts a project, gets really excited and then gets like frustrated and or you know into something else and just kind of fizzles away and has all these like half done projects so this can also be the in and out night you know kind of getting it's like a, a change in energy when this is upside down it's like really 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 passionate and then you don't have anything and then maybe you come back and really 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 passionate and then just where, what happened why is that so that could be an in and out energy um but upright i mean when this night is heading into those experiences heading towards being that beautiful king the king of fire i mean that's when you really feel exactly comfortable in your skin however you are that's like uber confident uber sexy but it's still the night so that means you still have to have some more experiences. You still have to you have some learning to do. Let's get clarity on this night or somebody else as well. It's also like fiery energy. Like I, I usually see the star as like an Aquarius energy, which is being unusual, original special looking at something a different way than anyone else would that's what creates huge change as well but this can be an aries leo sagittarius ish energy this could be somebody you know this could also be the advice that's coming through clarity on the night please I would say like 
maybe upside down this knight is also maybe not respectful of other people's time And then we have this. This is the want one card. I mean, I kind of see this. Maybe this person gets bored kind of fast. But this is like a moment of contemplation. This is not seeing this opportunity that's right here. It's, it's kind of just getting a little lost the card comes through when you're just a little lost and sometimes that's okay you need a moment to actually just not think really about anything so you get your footing back you get your energy back and you just have some clarity come about but the four of cups is like i mean there's nothing spilled here but this person isn't paying attention to this golden opportunity here being handed by the hand of God. So whatever chalice this is, once this person, you know, it's like I'm thinking of that water, replenishes his or herself with this spiritual energy, everything changes. Maybe this situation or these situations like weren't filling up his or her battery anymore. They weren't filling up the heart space. It wasn't something that continue to have this passion because the cups represent like overflowing love or the, the capacity for love to come in and fill something up so I feel like when this card comes through and there's just like something's going to come through to burst your energy back up, to lift your chin and take an opportunity. I mean, it can be that you try this again or you try to fill these things up, but you're also missing a grand opportunity here. There's one thing in particular that feels a little more special than the others. And it doesn't mean that what you have here isn't, is lost, it's still there. So there's also the pine cones here. That makes me think of a spiritual download. It's the pineal gland. I think there's a gigantic pine cone. I could be wrong. This is kind of dusty in the brain files. Uh, I'll just put this that way. And that's the lovers. Hi, babe. Um, I think there's a statue of a big pine cone in the courtyard of the Vatican. It could be somewhere else like that, but I, I think that's kind of interesting since that kind of re represents the pineal gland or the third eye or, you know, how we supposedly tap into spiritual energy. So it looks like this could be someone else too that was in this kind of energy, but eventually, eventually something comes through and you change where you're looking and you choose. Sometimes it's the right choice, sometimes it's not the right choice, but making a choice moves you forward. Not making a choice is still making a choice. And then we got a big choice here with the lovers. This is a weird card too. In this particular lovers, it looks like I mean, look at her face. She looks kind of happy, sort of. And he doesn't, he doesn't actually look happy in this particular deck. Usually in the lovers, it's the two that come together and they make a choice that feels like you're seeing eye to eye, heart to heart, energy is flowing. And it's like coming together in a beautiful union, but It looks kind of weird in this card. So I picked this deck for a reason. He does not look really happy. Maybe he doesn't know what to choose. It looks like his mind is somewhere else. It looks like she's kind of like, like could be sweet, like holding his head. What do you have to do? Do you have to poop? 
I think Rose has to go out. So I'm going to pause this and I'll be right back. I paused that on 3447. So, I mean, let's just look at the typical meaning of the lovers. It's a choice. It usually involves your heart and someone else. But when there's freedom to choose on both parties, in, in the account of both parties involved, it should be free because we all have free will. Somebody might choose the same as you. Somebody might not. But if there's communication here, it's possible to get on the same page. It's possible these people come together. It's possible they choose a different direction. Anything is possible. You have the star. But it's not pushing your opinion on anyone else or forcing anyone to choose something because it's your desire and your want. It's not, you can't force anybody to feel something they do or don't feel. People feel how they feel. So maybe you're actually discussing true feelings and emotions with someone else. Maybe you're coming together. Maybe you're compromising. Maybe you're figuring something out. But there has to be that freedom here. Otherwise, it's not a real kind of love. You want to feel free with someone else. Because you know it's going to stay. You know it's there because it's the same energy flow back and forth. Because it's support. And if it's a lack of that, where did you have? Where was that? Feel if there's something that's out of balance and there's not a coming together, then something needs to redirect and change. I mean, changes happen. Relationships come, relationships go. We're constantly making decisions that change us and evolve us. And it's possible that a partnership here can evolve and change. But if the change is not happening at the same time and there can't be a coming together on the same page, um, then there does need to be a big decision. So let's go to another tarot. I didn't get the typical energy with that particular lovers. Usually I love the lovers. Hey, I mean, that's such a cool card. It's a Gemini card. Um, but I'm kind of feeling like in that particular one, there's a little bit of a disconnect and it looks like there needs to be a conversation. I feel like this angel up here is trying to help the situation somehow. Like giving some angelic divine guidance. So let's go to a let's go to a different tarot deck and clarify that. This is thinking of the speaking of divine guidance. This is the angel wisdom. Let's get clarity on the lovers. I see these cards together too. I mean, I kind of see, look at, I kind of see this as well. If this is coming through with this situation, this kind of like boredom, lack of inspiration, lack of hope, lack, lack of healing, and no moss on this awesome, passionate energy, then maybe it's doing something to bring that back into balance. Going on a date, switching it up. Having a new adventure, trying something new. And if that's something that maybe was tried and this star is kind of just like, you know, like the things are just kind of falling out here, then maybe there needs to be an adjustment because there is a possibility for both of these people here to have this beautiful divine cup of love because we all deserve love we all deserve to be loved exactly how we want to be and how we need to be and have it be reciprocal so let's see rose is hiding her ball 
Let's get clarity on the lovers, please. It's also the interesting thing. I see this originality here. Like, what works in one relationship doesn't have to be the same in another relationship. That's a whole different person. So a decision, you know, can be coming to the conclusion um, how whatever this partnership should be is only really between these two people to know. It's not really a comparison thing to anyone else. And people change. So it is possible that you can here change the format of what something was if this is the same partnership. Let's see. Clarity for the collective, please. We have the page, the page of pentacles. Look at all these books. You're gaining knowledge. A little bunny here. It's a random little bunny. Everything looks really organized. There's information. I always see this page as the bookworm, but it's it's like the teacher's pet, but it's not the one that is like, it's like you ask the questions, but they want to have the experience. They want to really dive into something and put their hands on something and make something because it's physical environment. So you want to physically be doing something and touch something. It's like, it's like, I mean, maybe it's just the bookworm, but I see it as usually the one in, in science class that wants to see how everything, I'm getting like, like a catalyst, how everything works, to have a better understanding than just reading it. Um, they want to apply the knowledge. It's scholarly, cheerful, dependable, mischievous. Usually I see the mischievous one as the page, but here it's this one. It's a little stinker. Time to get to work. An excellent opportunity presents itself. Happy news about your career, promotion, or scholarships in a new area of study. For some of you, this decision might be about not just what makes you passionate, but diving into something that actually is um, like going back to school or something that you want to study, you want to actually have some information, know more about something, it's still the page. So you still have to get a lot more information and definitely more experience. But this page really wants to put his or her time and attention into something. Like that's the page that wants to get better. Rose is just playing with her ball. Let's get one more card. Clarity two, three. We have three. What's there? At the bottom, there is somebody leaving something behind. You're putting all these swords neatly here. You're walking out the door and you're going to go on a journey. The Ten of Swords is harsh, usually. It's like a big ending. It's kind of like that tower moment in the, in the minor arcana. But... There's so much healing that happens afterwards. It's walking out the door, packing your suitcase, the end of a situation that brings relief and sadness, sometimes both. It's an opportunity for new happiness, a weight off your shoulders, the end of an addiction, and sometimes a melodramatic reaction. So whatever situation this is, this could be also someone else leaving a situation behind, but it just became too much and letting something actually go feels so much lighter. It feels so much better. It brings so much more mental clarity. Um, so sometimes, you know, we, when something goes away, sometimes it's bittersweet. Sometimes it feels really good. Sometimes it's a big adjustment period. What do we have here? Well, it looks like somebody's making it to be the king. That's cool. So no, no longer acting slightly immature about something. Recognizing your personal power. Your capacity to 
be strong, be secure, be passionate, be adventurous, be bold, be big, be sexy. This king has kind of got it going on. It's usually a, a fire sign, but he looks very comfortable now. Not in and out or in this energy of wishy-washy, not seeing opportunity. This king is going to take those opportunities every time. And he's not afraid of failure either. This king just wants to try something again, wants a new experience, because that's how he learns. That how, that's how he got to be the king. It says motivational. Wow, you have the muse and motivational. Inspiring, theatrical, ambitious, taking a leadership role, stepping in the spotlight, public speaking, keeping your eye on the big picture, communicate your vision, communicate your dream. Keep your eyes on the bigger picture. I said that. And don't be sensitive to criticism. You know, that's like, you know, when he's upside down. He's so confident in himself that he thinks he knows everything. And that's not always true. But to be constructive, to be the king, is to, you know, Take it in, okay, oh yeah, okay, I could adjust that a little bit and maybe I should do that a different way or maybe that didn't come across quite so well because he wants to learn and expand. Come on up here, babe. Come on, come on. Rose needs my attention soon. You are walking away from something. This is that Eight of Swords energy. Can't even remember the beginning of this reading. Did I say something about the Eight of Swords like kind of being stuck? You're taking off your blindfold. You're walking through this big gate. You're opening something out. You're finding a way where the thing, where you felt like you were trapped, either forced you or redirection. It was like that hurdle. Or you've changed in your confidence to believe that maybe you weren't trapped at all. You just had to have the confidence to make a move, to do something a different way. It's just getting stuck in your mind and therefore stalling on moving your actual physical body. So it's an illusion of entrapment, the lack of self-confidence, which is definitely not this one, that makes you feel helpless. Being afraid to take action, and you have this cheetah. It looks like all you needed to do was get out of this wishy-washy energy where you feel like you're stuck. The four, of, the four of cups is like not wanting to deal or see anything. Here, you're at the crossroads with the seven of cups. You have all these choices here. Which are you going to choose? It's like being in the grocery store. You have all these options in front of you. Do I choose that? Do I choose that? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? Eventually, you need to pick something. You need to make a choice, you know, and if it's not the right one, you'll figure it out. You'll choose the other one next time. Come up here, babe. Come on. Come on. Sit up here with me for a minute. Sit up here and hang out. Hang out a little bit and then, then you've got me all to yourself. Okay. So when this card comes through, the seven of cups, it just says to get out of this stuck energy, to get out of this situation that is just overwhelming you. You need to make a choice. Maybe it's making a choice to learn about something more or about somebody more or having that clarity or that communication. But to just not choose is not going to get you anywhere. And you need to trust yourself with those, cho those choices. It's okay to make the wrong choice and to do something a different way the next time because that eliminates one choice. Now you only have so many other ones to choose from, but you have to go with the one that feels like it's like the, it's, there's one of these usually that feels better than the other. There's one color that you like better than the other. Usually these have different things. Usually there's like a castle, a heart, a bird, you know, something like that. But here, 
you have to go with an energy because they're colors. So colors have a frequency. They have an energetic pattern. So you have to go with the energy that feels like it fits you best. That feels like that cup has the right energy to replenish you. To get you moving, to get you flowing. Make a choice. Stop procrastinating or overanalyzing. Get clarity on what you desire. What is it that you really wish? What is it that makes you passionate? What is it that gets your fire moving, that makes you move? What is it you want more knowledge on? You are fully capable of, of achieving it. Too many options, and sometimes this is addictions. Which are just things that you do a little too much of that are... Where do you have that? You have that healthy water energy. You know, they're kind of stopping and blocking your flow of something. And that could be anything. That could be a thing. It could be a person. That could be a situation. But it's when you have a little bit of that too much energy and now it's not... It's kind of blocking you. It's not helping. It's not elevating you. So that's just sometimes a big, you know, stop or rue or something that really needs to be changed. Or sometimes it's just a small adjustment. What was the last card? King, page, ten. Is that it? Oh, there were a lot of messages here, guys. I hope something came through that was helpful. Um, it looks like the big message is making a choice towards your heart's true desire. I mean, you have big choice with the lovers, but that could be a big choice within yourself. What you really love, what balances your masculine and your feminine. What makes your heart feel overflowed with love? What makes you feel like your energy is free? It's definitely getting out of your head or someone else is getting getting out of their head because if you overthink something too much, um, that can lead to like a self-sabotage or procrastination or your own hurdles that you're putting up. I feel like whatever you're doing to make, oh, this, this is the other card, to make a move, to get out of, to change directions. To be responsible, take responsibility back to you for what you can control, what you cannot control, really just puts you back in the driver's seat here. Or that's how someone else is feeling. Oh yeah, you like your little, he likes your ears. He likes you getting into it. Let's sum this reading up with a... Hmm. What can we use to kind of sum it up? Let's do the winged enchantment. One more card. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. I hope it was helpful. Sometimes it's just one message. You know, like one of these things is like, ooh, yes. And sometimes, you know, other parts of this reading are for somebody else. So always just take, take the parts that resonate for you. And sometimes it's helping you understand possibly what somebody else is going through. You know, if you're connected through love. Let's get one more message for the collective, please, and thank you. Oh, wow, the Kingfisher. This is that bird that, like, knows how to get his catch. There are such cool birds. Um, where's the... Where did I put the book? You see this? This person looks like they're on like, what are they doing? It's like a magical disc that they're standing on, on the water. It's almost like it has a motor and it's moving them. I don't even know what's happening with this card, but it's amazing. There's so much energy here. And that's an 18. 
So you get to move from the 17 to the 18. Oh, my glasses. All right, let's look. Let's send this reading up for you guys. I am Kingfisher, the master of the deep. I am the retrieval of the past. I am seeker of the unknown. I am the one you send to the darkest waters of the mind. I am discovery. I mean, this is the one that wants to discover new things. I'm re restoration. I have a hit. I have you have hidden something beneath your surface. I will release you from what ties you to the bottom. You had all that restricting energy, You're kind of holding you down. And it looks like you know those things that were binding you to something are just now falling away. Doors are opening. You're having more movement. You have this sort of clarity that's grounded. Things must come to light now. Indecision. <laughs> oh my gosh, apparently somebody's really indecisive about something. Indecision, where is it? So many of these cards. Hold on. Let's show you this. Indecision with this one. And definitely this one. Must, uh, must be washed away. I am the promise of new warmth and abundance. I am the one who restores the calm. That's that hope. There's no greater catharsis than the renewal of consciousness. Ooh, that gave me, wow, that gave me big old chill ruse. You are release. Wow, if this, especially if this is the energy around you or someone else, I mean, that's going to feel like the biggest relief and release ever. That's going to feel so good because this card is heavy. You are the claimer of dark waters. You are subconscious alignment and you are King Fisher. Okay. I hope. This reading was helpful for you guys. Um, sometimes readings are fun. Sometimes they're intense. Sometimes they're all over the place. But either way, I just want to show you that awesome cheetah one more <laughs> time. We're going to end with this awesome guy because you know what? Let's bring the energy back to this. It's amazing. You can do it. Once you choose, once you know what your attention is, your focus, your dream, your heart, it looks like you're going to move and get your goal. So thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you soon. Mwah. Bye.